I want, to, I want to address another question, and again, it's still connected to the ideas of the saints, which is, as you may know, certain sectarian Christians have come down to this park, and those sectarian Christians have caused a fuss. They have demonstrated the divisions of the church, and they have wallowed in the schismatic separation of the church, and they have shown the, the against scriptural injunction publicly the disputes of the Christians where scripture commands us to solve these things in private. Now Muslims in their videos have jumped on the back of this and have mocked Christians by saying I thought you were all guided by the Holy Spirit. I thought the Holy Spirit was guiding you. If the Holy Spirit is guiding you is he guiding the sectarians or the ecumenists? Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to uh, explain that very, how the Holy Spirit guides the church to address that very question. But I want to root it, obviously, in the promise of Christ. And this is the promise of Christ. But now I am going to him who sent me, and none of you ask, where are you going? But it is because I have said these things to you, uh, sorrow has filled your heart, but I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go. For if I do not go away, the helper, which is the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Not Allah, Jesus will send him to you. So this is not Muhammad. I will send him to you, and he, when he comes, will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me, and concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you no longer see me. And concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world has been judged. I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes he will guide you into all truth so Christ has made a very firm promise that the Holy Spirit will guide the church ladies and gentlemen and because Muslims don't understand this doctrine they mock this doctrine whenever they see Christians disputing now I want to be clear scripture warns us against private interpretation in chapter 2 in 1 Peter chapter 2 1 to 20 we read 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 20 to 21 we read bear with us for what credit is there wait is it 1 Peter it might be oh sorry it's 2 Peter there we go Bear with me one second. Chapter 2, verses 20 to 21, we read the following. For if after they have escaped the defilements of the world by the knowledge of the Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and are overcome, the last state has become worse for them than the first. For it would be better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn away from the holy commandments handed on to them. It, is, it has happened to them according to the true proverb, a dog returns to its own vomit and a sow after washing returns to wallowing in the mire. Sorry, I think I might have got the wrong scripture. Bear with me. Maybe it is 1 Peter chapter 2. Sorry. No, that is actually relevant. Um, I'm going to still use it. No, I can't find it. Could someone, could someone just look up where it says Scripture is not due to private interpretation? I've obviously got the wrong chapter. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as we'll see when I read it, Scripture 
warns us against private interpretation. In other words, you are warned not to go off on your own and make up your own interpretation of Scripture. 2 Peter 1.20. Thank you very much. So 2 Peter 1.20, it says, For he has... Two, oh, 2 Peter, not 1. 2 Peter 1.20, we read, But know this first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation, for no prophecy is ever made by an act of human will, but men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. Now, this warns us against going off on our own and doing our own thing. And many a Christian has turned up at Speaker's Corner teaching all kind of nonsense because they went off on their own, abandoned the church, abandoned meeting together as the church warns them not to, and then establishing themselves as a teacher and, and making themselves their own counsel. And so we're warned to not move away from the congregation of the faith. Now the congregation of the faith is not in the Roman Catholic sense that I'm using, brothers, but rather in, but rather in the consistent witness of the church down through the ages. I will take questions, let me land but the consistent witness of the church down through the ages. So, for example, saints like Saint Augustine or Saint Ignatius or Saint Chrysostom or Saint um, Isaac uh, the Syrian, they, through the working out of their own spirituality, gave a contribution in terms of their theological insights or in terms of their ecclesiological insights or in terms of their spiritual practice or in terms of their moral or ethical insights they gave us a, a, a vessel of truth by which the Holy Spirit uses them to guide the church let me give you an example. How many of you have read C.S. Lewis? A few of you have put your hands up. Why did you read C.S. Lewis? You read C.S. Lewis because you believe C.S. Lewis can teach you, can teach you about the truth. You don't just say to yourself, oh, I just use the Bible, but you, you read the Bible with people like C.S. Lewis so that you don't stray from what is true. Like a modern example today would be N.T. Wright, who is a modern living father. G.K. Chesterton, Luther used Augustine, Saint Augustine, uh, influenced the thinking of Luther and the whole of the Reformation. In other words, it is through the lives of such saints and in their own personal working out in fear and trembling of their own faith and the vessels and the, 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 the teachings that they leave in their wake or in the philosophies that they leave in their wake or in the institutions that they leave in their wake that the Holy Spirit has been, guided the, has been guiding the church because the church will universally gravitate to such people like Augustine, like uh, C.S. Lewis, like Chrysostom, like Irenaeus, like Ignatius. And so they become used by the whole church as the whole church recognizes the personal inspiration of the Holy Spirit in the life of that church. And so they, these saints become signs to us about how to walk the Christian life. They become the guidance of the Holy Spirit to the communion of the living saints, to the church militant here on earth. And so you would do well to learn their counsel. You would do well 
to read the writings of St. Augustine as Calvin did and as Luther did. You would do well to know the writings of Ignatius and Polycarp as C.S. Lewis did and G.K. Chesterton did. And you would do well as a Christian to aspire that you contribute nothing new to the truth. Let the idea of new revelation fill you with dread. No Christian should be coming across new theology. We should only be rediscovering a forgotten aspect of the truth or applying the truth in a new way. And then in that action, in that event, you yourself can contribute or rather the Holy Spirit could contribute through you to the guidance of the church. In other words, in the Holy Spirit, we as Christians collectively don't believe that the Holy Spirit is guiding the church by the opinion of every Tom, Dick and Harry that decides to come down to Speaker's Corner and rip up the unity of the church here in Speaker's Corner. The father of lies and division is the devil. And those that are tearing apart the body of Christ are servants of the devil. And so as Christians, we must work to the unity of the church. And to you Muslims who think that our divisions here in the park demonstrate that the Holy Spirit is not guiding us, well, here is the doctrine of how the Holy Spirit guides the church. Individuals can fall out. Calvin disagreed with Luther. But that doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit was not at work in challenging the abuses of the Catholic Church in those medieval days. Personally, the Reformation Civil War, I think, was a failure on the part of all the Christians involved. But, ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Spirit is working across denominations and when holy men get recognized by the church for their personal inspiration by the Holy Spirit, they become sign marks or their institutions do, their movements do or their writings do as a guidance to the whole church and that's how the Holy Spirit is guiding the whole church into all truth. Any questions before I'm... Wait, I want to finish on a, a passage. In Romans chapter 8, verse 5, before I take questions, you'll get the first question. In Romans chapter 8, verse 5, it says this. It says, For those who are according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. So what the Apostle is talking about is that these saints, the reason why they become saints is because they press into the things of the Holy Spirit. They press into the work of the Holy Spirit. They press into the previous teachings of the Holy Spirit. And because they press into it, they build upon it and because they build upon it the Holy Spirit uses them to guide the church so those Christians that are not pressing into the things of the Spirit but are being moved by their ego and their pride to try and gain themselves a reputation here at Speaker's Corner those that are dividing the body of Christ for their own fame are pressing into the things of the flesh any questions, ladies and gentlemen? So how do you know the right interpretation? Different right, and so it is the fact that the Holy Spirit, uh, if you, I don't know if you were here for the whole talk, so maybe you missed a part, but Christians gather around truth naturally. Roman Catholics, Orthodox and Protestants all quote C.S. Lewis. Roman Catholics, Protestants and Orthodox all quote N.T. Wright. Roman Catholics, Protestants and Orthodox all quote Augustine. Roman Catholics, Protestants and Orthodox all quote Ignatius. And so where the church agrees, 
we can see that that is true. All Christians agree with the Nissin formula about the Trinity. No Christian disagrees with the Nissin creed. Protestants, Catholic and Orthodox all agree. And so, where Christians agree, there is your safest point in terms of knowledge about what the right interpretation is. And where they disagree, to answer your question fully, we Christians have to evaluate how serious is the matter of the disagreement. So for example, should you use alcoholic wine or non-alcoholic wine in communion? Should you use leavened bread or unleavened bread in communion? Well, that's a disagreement, but ladies and gentlemen, it isn't a disagreement of great consequence. It's not worth fighting about. How many books you have in the Bible is not a topic worth fighting about, though it is a more important question than the question of leavened bread or unleavened bread. So don't get rat treat everything like it's heresy because it's not. Some things are just errors and not important ones at that. Any other questions before I move on to my next topic? Any other questions on the topic of how the Holy Spirit guides the church? Going once, going twice, Still on the topic, um, I've heard the word sectarian being used quite often. I'm not too sure what it means. Can you let us know? Yeah, so a sectarian Christian is a Christian who ignores the teaching of Scripture where the Scriptures command us to build up the unity of the church and to work for the unity of the church, to be of one mind and to not be partisan. A sectarian ignores all of that and tries to justify their, their divisionalism by saying, well, I'm, I'm standing up for the truth, despite the fact that part of the truth is working for the unity of the church. So they're picking and choosing which parts of the truth they want to hold on to. By comparison, an ecumenist Christian is a Christian who is looking for how he can bring the church together. And there are two types of Christians active in Speaker's Corner. Those that are working together for the good of the kingdom and the gospel, and those that are working for themselves and chucking the gospel and the kingdom and the unity of the church and other Christians under the bus. Any other questions on the topic of how the Holy Spirit guides the whole church before I move on? They would be non-Christians. And the reason why they would be non-Christians is because they deny the Trinity. They deny that Jesus is the eternal Son of God, the eternal Word of God. They say that Jesus is created. But that, 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 is, being estab that is established in Scripture. But it was the saints like Athanasius and the Cappadocian fathers who, through their efforts and good works, established that doctrine against heresy and the reasoning out of those church fathers. And their use of scripture has gone on to influence the church in its own use of scripture in establishing those doctrines, thus making the point that I'm making about how the Holy Spirit guides the church. Let someone else ask a question unless you want to debate. Anyone else want to ask a question? I think you ha I've heard it being said that the Trinity is three persons. But yet in James, just got your opinion on this or your understanding, James 2.11, it says God has no respect for persons. Right. When it says in James that God is not a respecter of persons, it is talking about human authorities. It is n that, that verse can't be applied to the divine persons of the Trinity. So, so that would be a misuse of scripture. Not from you, but whoever's told you. Yeah. Go on. No, Jesus is not created by God. Jesus, Jesus is the word of God. And God can't be without his word because God is eternal. And if God is eternal, his word is eternal. And since Jesus is the word of God, Jesus therefore is also eternal. 
Any other questions before I carry on with the presentation? Okay, so this is the... Sorry, I'll, that was going once. Any questions going twice? <laughs> Any questions going three times? Okay. Any other questions on topic? By the way, when he interrupts, I'll be stopping. You'll be stopping. Like yes. Any other questions on the topic, ladies and Are gentlemen? Are you calling on Trump to intervene in Armenia, Bob? Any other call? questions from anyone calling? except him before anyone I finish? Except him, because basically going you, once. You don't know your US politics, bro. Going twice. You were talking rubbish last week, Bob. Going three times. Rubbish. Okay, you thank you, ladies and you gentlemen. Do, don't talk about US politics. Do you want to collect your microphones? No, I'm do I'm stopping, bro. Sister, can I give you these microphones? There we go, there you Bob. Go. You're a coward and you're a slanderer. Slow down, brother. You're Slow a down. Slanderers, adulterers, fornicators will not inherit the kingdom of God. I hope, I hope you, are a fornic you are a You are a slanderer. You are a slanderer. You are a total slanderer and a coward. Yes. Your coward of Speaker's Corner, you will not have a debate with me on separation of church and state. You will not debate Trump with me. You're a disgrace, Bob. What are you? I pray for his salvation. The funny thing is, the funny thing is, just on that question, guys, anyone who anyone who wants to have a conversation, I will not debate him. How childish are you, Bob? Mike, no, 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 I'll, I'll hold it. But if they start talking, I'll, 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 I'll hand them back. That's what Christ said. So, so just, just on that question. So, I, I, I believe that Northern Kosovo should be given back to Serbia. But if the, Kosovan, if the Kosovan people continue to return to the Christian faith as they are doing in masses, then I'm totally in favour of Kosovan independence. Well, why will you Stop only talk to people who don't know what they're talking about, yeah? There we go. You don't, you don't know what you're talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, you were talking about candidates Anyone last week. who would like to join me for stuff. a cup of tea you are an idiot. in the hotel, oh, I'm going to go and get a pub, drink. Bye. Unfortunately, bye bye, bye bye, Bob. Bye bye, Bob. Attracts people with mental health oh, problems. Oh, you're slandering me again. You're a slanderer. You're a slanderer. As you judge for yourself. You don't know what you are talking about. You are a slanderer and a coward. Why are you shouting?